Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and a glorious new year to you all. This is the final tech news episode for 2021, since I have instructed all tech news sources to stop doing anything of note for a couple weeks so we can just enjoy some time off at the end of the year. Of course, that means this past week has been a bit off the rails in terms of things happening, with everyone wanting to get their newsworthy activities completed before the cutoff so they could be properly summarized in my show, including stuff like more dumb GPUs from NVIDIA, ridiculous server hardware from AMD, a mixed bag of Alder Lake goodies from Intel, and software exploits and vulnerabilities that threaten the very foundations of the internet, cropping up just moments after your IT staff checked out for their winter holiday. What did you get in your stocking? Why, it's countless hours of remote debugging from grandma and grandpa's cabin while you pray their shoestring internet connection can maintain VPN access. Tis the season. Excellent! Today's video is brought to you by Micro Center, one of my favorite places to buy PC parts, whether it's online or at one of their 25 retail stores in the US. They have consistently competitive prices and an excellent selection of PC hardware and other tech goodies, as well as the custom PC builder on the Micro Center website. Use it to spec out your rig and it will show you parts in stock at your nearest store while ensuring compatibility with your selections. Then you can pick up or have their pros assemble it for you. So click the sponsor link in the description and don't forget to sign up for the free in-store gift. NVIDIA might actually have some upgraded 30 series GPUs launching in early 2022, but they've left most of us with the proverbial lump of coal as a parting gift in 2021. Following the offensive launch of the RTX 2060 12 gig last week, they have now announced even further regression in their product lineup with the announcement of the all new RTX 2050 mobile GPU on Friday. Yes, a 2050, the GPU that they didn't even bother to release when the 20 series was at the height of its mediocrity in mid 2020, will be available in spring 2022, along with a couple MX series chips for super budget video out functions. While the RTX 2050 will sport 2048 CUDA cores, technically more than the RTX 2066 gig, which has 1920, the 2050's memory configuration is quite awful. Four gigs of GDDR6, but on a 64-bit bus, providing just one third of the bandwidth compared to the 2060. The only possible silver lining is that this configuration will likely be very undesirable for crypto mining, meaning laptops with these GPUs might actually have reasonable pricing. Still, it's unlikely to be a worthy stand-in for even an entry-level discrete GPU in terms of gaming, so I guess we'll have to hold out for 2022's inevitable launch of, I don't know, the 1080 Ti Redux, probably. Meanwhile, AMD is pressing on with their attempts to usurp Intel's dominance in the server and data center market, and we have another tidbit about their epic Genoa processors expected in 2022. According to a Linux driver published late last week, they will feature a 12-channel memory controller that can support up to 12 terabytes of DDR5. That would add up to 24 DIMM slots, each with a 512 gigabyte 3DS RDIMM module installed, and although DDR5 speeds of up to 5200 megatransfers per second are officially listed, that drops to 4,000 when the memory capacity is maxed out. Genoa's overall specs are looking quite beastly at this point though, being based on 5 nanometers N4 chiplets with a new LGA 6069 socket, nice, up to 96 cores and 192 threads, 128 PCI Express Gen 5 lanes, and a nice toasty 400 watt TDP that should keep server rooms plenty warm next winter. Speaking of toasty CPUs, Intel's Alder Lake desktop non-K SKUs, the ones that aren't unlocked for overclocking, typically ship with a stock cooler that is quite horrible. Since all the 12th gen CPUs that launched this year were K SKUs, the stock cooler has not been revealed, except through some early leaks back in September. Those images were pulled from an informational slide and weren't the best quality, but Twitter leaker Momomo underscore US posted a much clearer image of the stock cooler Monday, and it doesn't look good. Well, maybe it looks okay if looks are all you care about and you fancy adding useless plastic to things, but even the aesthetics are dubious as the semi-opaque grayish plastic fins are dangerously close to the clear heels style case fans that we all know are universally tacky. I still maintain that it looks like the exact same aluminum fin array beneath the useless plastic embellishments that Intel has been using for years, and while I wouldn't typically complain about adding an RGB light ring, it brings me no joy if there are zero functional upgrades to the unit otherwise. Also, still with the push pin mounts Intel? For shame. Momomo followed that up on Friday by posting images from Asus Z690 motherboard support pages. The BIOS screenshots for several boards clearly show Intel's unreleased non-K desktop CPUs, such as the 12900, 12700, and 12400. While the settings shown might not be default values, the 12400 has a base clock of 2.5 GHz with a 4 GHz operational frequency, the 12900 shows a base of 2.4 with a running clock of 4.7 and a boost of 5.1 GHz, and the 12700 
shows only the base of 2.1 gigahertz with no further info listed. More Intel news, according to data harvested from Geekbench servers, here is just about every 12th gen core Alder Lake P mobile CPU expected to launch in January, sometime after CES announcements are made. Being mobile CPUs, they thankfully won't ship with the aforementioned stock CPU cooler, and the flagship for Alder Lake P, the 12900HK, will provide 14 cores and 20 threads via 6P cores and 8E cores. Note that this list doesn't account for the ultra low power Alder Lake M lineup or the enthusiast Alder Lake S BGA CPUs that don't seem to be much different from their desktop counterparts. With configurations ranging from 12 to 20 threads though, these CPUs will power the bulk of mainstream Intel 12th gen laptops in 2022, although the Geekbench benchmark numbers should be taken with a grain of salt as they do not all utilize multi-threading properly with the hybrid 12th gen CPU design. Moving on, we have some terrifying news for Apple iMessage users. Israeli technology firm the NSO Group has developed an X exploit for the software that doesn't even require you to click on anything to get hacked. It's dubbed the zero-click iPhone exploit, but NSO Group appropriately calls it forced entry, and it takes advantage of the way iMessage interprets files like GIFs to open a malicious PDF file with no action required from the victim. It does so by using old code from the 1990s to process text and scanner images. That sounds lovely. The malware then creates a virtualized environment where it can run JavaScript-like code, giving the attacker access to the device's password microphone, audio, and more. It is extremely hard to detect and is a weapon against which there is no defense, Google Project Zero researchers said, which almost makes this like a mini oh joy segment, I guess, since there is currently no solution for this horrible problem. Speaking of horrible problems in need of a solution, the Log4j vulnerability known as Log4Shell has been a hot topic in the cybersecurity world for well over a week now. Log4j is an open source Java-based logging library that's used by literally millions of apps and services across the internet, including Steam, Apple iCloud, Amazon, Cloudflare, and Twitter. The vulnerability was first reported by Alibaba Cloud's security team on November 24th and has already been exploited in nefarious ways from holding Minecraft servers for ransom to injecting compromised systems with cryptocurrency mining malware. By midweek, there were already attacks reportedly coming from state-sponsored hacking groups linked to governments in China, Iran, North Korea, and Turkey. And the frustrating part for end users is that there's not much you can do about it. This is an enterprise issue and patches need to be applied server side. Fortunately, companies with the resources to do so are rolling out fixes quickly, like Cloudflare, who enabled firewall protection for all their customers, even those who hadn't paid for it. But with such a broad range of applications applications affected, it will be a long time before all attack vectors are known. Even worse, some systems might be compromised prior to getting patched and could be breached months or even years in the future. Fallout will likely continue well into the new year, as publication of the details of the exploit was a double-edged sword. Security teams were alerted to the issue so they could work on fixes, but malicious actors have also been made aware, which has exponentially increased the number of attacks over the past week. Next, I heard you might be hungry for some tech briefs, so feast your eyes on these. Gigabyte can't seem to stop with the tech faux pas, and this time the source was their Oris France Twitter account, which posted an image of what they call Project Stealth on Monday, 3D renders of a motherboard and GPU with power and other connectors moved to the back for a super clean build that custom sleeving companies like CableMod must really hate. Sounds fine until you realize that Main Gear CEO Wallace Santos already patented the idea back in 2011, which would make things a little awkward. Fortunately, Mr. Santos has been very diplomatic about the whole thing, and he says he'd rather push this forward as a new standard with board makers rather than pursue enforcement of the patent. It does look like Gigabyte actually produced prototypes though, so hopefully they'll play fair and pursue an open standard so we can all benefit from super clean looking builds in the future. Xiaomi's listing of one of their newest monitors, the Fast LCD Monitor 24.5 inch 240 hertz version, prompted an uproar on Monday when the fine print revealed that the listed HDMI 2.1 compatible ports on the device actually don't live up to the HDMI 2.1 standards. Inquiries with HDMI.org further revealed that HDMI 2.0 no longer exists and the features of HDMI 2.0 are now a subset of HDMI 2.1. So rather than having two names for two different standards, manufacturers can now just use the same name and then put some notes in the fine print to make it super clear and evident to consumers if the device or cable actually supports HDMI 2.1 features like variable refresh rate, auto low latency mode, or 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth versus HDMI 2.0, which caps at 18, literally less than half of that. I have a better idea for the new HDMI standard HDMI UD, which stands for Hey Dude, maybe instead use DisplayPort. Next, a suspected crypto mining farm has burned down in Thailand. Good.
popular social media platform TikTok started testing desktop streaming software Wednesday, which they call Live Studio, but it was quickly discovered that it's just a fork of OBS, the open source streaming software that is very popular because it is very good. Unfortunately, TikTok's version appears to violate the OBS GPL2 open source license agreement though, which requires source code to be made publicly available if requested. OBS business dev Ben Terrell has indicated that OBS usually deals with these kinds of violations in good faith though, meaning they won't be calling the lawyers in right away and have already taken some steps that will hopefully result in an amicable resolution. At long last, as of Thursday, the Final Fantasy VII Remake has launched for PC. It is called Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade because it's a PS4 game that was ported to PS5 and then had DLC added. And now it's available on PC. It's 70 bucks, a price many felt was a bit steep, but I'll be buying it anyway because nostalgia is a hell of a drug. And I've been holding out for the PC version anyway, so I can't really change my mind over 10 or 20 bucks, which is likely the exact reason why they stuck with the price despite some initial backlash. You'll also need 100 gigs of storage for the install, but once you've gotten past those sticking points, you can join Cloud, Tifa, Barrett, and friends for a romp around Midgar, with PS5 DLC included too, in up to 4K 120 FPS resolution. I've almost hit my limit break just thinking about it. Finally, we have an update on NASA's long-awaited James Webb Telescope. It made the journey down to Europe's spaceport in French Guiana. It's fueled up and ready to go. And of course, there has been one hopefully last delay. Originally intended to launch in 2018, the more recent target date was yesterday, December 18th, which was pushed to December 22nd, and is now set for Christmas Eve, December 24th. Webb is the world's most powerful and complex space observatory, and will help answer questions about our own solar system as well as exoplanets elsewhere in the galaxy. It will take about two months months for Webb to reach its orbit point and unfold its 18-panel gold-coated mirror array, followed by six months of instrument cooling, alignment, and calibration. Fingers crossed for some epic space images later in 2022, though, and hopefully the launch doesn't cross paths with a fat dude in a sleigh full of presents being pulled by magic flying reindeer. I feel like there's an interstellar meme that could work here. So there you have it guys, tech news for the week and indeed tech news for the year. I just wanted to say thanks to everyone for watching this series in 2021. I kicked it off back in January and I've had a lot of fun putting them together. It's been an outlet for my frustrations with the GPU shortage and the difficulties it's presented PC gamers, but I've also learned a lot and I've tried to throw a bit of randomness into each installment. Shout out to editor Joe for embellishing the show in post-production, often in ways I would not have expected. And we hope to continue bringing you the tech news with an occasional joke thrown in in 2022. Oh, and this isn't my my last video for the year, it's just the last tech news. I will have a few more projects going up before the 31st. Your feedback is always welcome, so please feel free to leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested in further reading. You can also click the like button if you enjoyed this video, check out my store at paulshardware.net for a selection of excellent merchandise options, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future. Thanks again everyone, and we'll see you next week and next year.